if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. If you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your God, and f*** off. Ricky Gervais has always been a polarizing figure, but recently he has become a fierce critic of woke Hollywood and its woke celebrities, and he's not afraid to ruffle feathers. Speaking of courage, just wait until you hear how far Gervais goes when he claps back at his critics. Trust me, you won't believe how far he goes. More on that soon. But here's the real question. Has Hollywood, often seen as the moral compass of society, gone too far with performative wokeness? Or is Gervais simply saying what so many are thinking but too afraid to voice? Spoiler alert, um, season two is on the way. So in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. Shut up! I know he's your friend, but I don't care. Let's rewind to the 2020 Golden Globes, a night Ricky Gervais turned into a wake-up call for woke Hollywood. Celebrities had become predictable, always using their speeches to preach about climate change, diversity, and equality, while sipping on $500 champagne. But when Ricky stepped on stage, the vibe was different. He wasn't there to play nice or pander to the elites. No, Ricky Gervais, ready to tear down the facade that Hollywood had been hiding behind for far too long. From the very start, he made it clear, no one was safe, not the stars, not NBC, and especially not the woke celebrities pushing their sanctimonious agendas. Gervais wasn't just up there for laughs, he was calling out Hollywood's hypocrisy. Talking of all you perverts, it was a big year, it was a big year for pedophile movies. Um, surviving R. Kelly, Leaving Neverland, two popes. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. With one sentence, he had everyone on edge. What followed was a brutal takedown of Hollywood's biggest stars and their performative wokeness. Gervais exposed them for what they are. Wealthy, powerful, and completely detached from reality. Apple roared into the, the TV game with a morning show. A superb drama about the importance of dignity and doing the right thing, made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. His words stung because they were true. These woke celebrities love to talk about justice and equality, but when it comes to making millions off unethical companies, they're suddenly silent. So, well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? So. The hypocrisy was blatant, and Gervais wasn't holding back, but that wasn't all. He moved on to one of Hollywood's more recent embarrassments at the time, the college admissions scandal, with Felicity Huffman front and center. A night meant to celebrate film and TV quickly became one where the industry's dark side was laid bare. Hold up, you came here in your limos. I came here in a limo tonight, and the license plate was made by Felicity Huffman. So, no. It's her, it's her daughter I feel sorry for, okay? That must be the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to her. Few awkward laughs and uncomfortable silence. Many in the room probably wondered who Ricky would go after next. But that was Gervais's entire point. Hollywood's elite, these woke celebrities, needed to be reminded that they weren't untouchable. No matter how much money or fame they had, Ricky was ready to skewer them with his signature sharp wit. One of the biggest moments of the night came when Ricky set his sights on Leonardo DiCaprio. Once upon a time in Hollywood, nearly three hours long, Leonardo DiCaprio attended the premiere, and by the end, his date was too old for him. So... <laughs> now we all know Leo's reputation when it comes to dating younger women, but Gervais took it one step further and made sure no one would forget it anytime soon. Even Prince Andrew's like, come on, Leo, mate, you know. <laughs> You're nearly 50, son. Um, the, the crowd's reaction? Nervous laughter, of course, but this was Ricky at his finest. He wasn't afraid to poke fun at Hollywood's untouchables, the ones who seemed immune to criticism. But Gervais wasn't done yet. He turned his attention to the real power in the room, the studio executives. The people in front of the camera, in this room are some of the most important TV and film executives in the world. People from every background, but they all have one thing in common. 
they're all terrified of Ronan Farrow. <laughs> He's coming for you. This hit differently. The room went from uneasy chuckles to pure tension. Farrow had shaken the foundations of Hollywood by exposing decades of abuse. And Gervais wasn't about to let anyone forget that. It was more than just a joke, it was a reminder that Hollywood's reckoning wasn't over, and no amount of woke speeches or virtue signaling could erase its past. But here's the thing. While Gervais left Hollywood squirming, the reactions from people at home were completely different. Social media exploded with praise for Ricky, calling him a hero for daring to speak the uncomfortable truth. One comment summed it up perfectly. Did you see the faces of Tom Hanks and Robert De Niro? Of course, not everyone loved it, but Ricky, he didn't back down. Instead, he doubled down, making it clear he wasn't going to apologize for holding woke celebrities accountable for their hypocrisy. This sentiment resonated with many fans who feel that celebrity opinions often come from a place of privilege. People come yeah. up and they say, oh, I was offended by that joke. And, yeah. uh, uh, my first reaction is, I don't care. Mm -hmm. like, well, that doesn't mean anything. You're you're telling me how you feel. What what I want to say? Why? Why? I actually I'm willing to explain why it's not offensive. Do because mm -hmm. I want to go there because I want to take the audience by the hand and take them through a scary forest. Do right. You know what I mean, I like sure. I like the discomfort of of expressing and talking about really uncomfortable things because that that's that's what most people worry about. Most if you're in a, a safe world. Gervais always stands by his beliefs. He isn't afraid to dive headfirst into some of the most heated cultural debates, and one of his favorite topics lately is the controversy surrounding gender identity. He takes a sharp jab at woke culture by targeting how society navigates the issue of pronouns and gender expression. I mean the old-fashioned ones, you know, the old-fashioned women. Oh, God, you know, the ones with wombs. Oh. <laughs> No, it's the old-fashioned way. And now the old-fashioned they're like, oh, they want to use our toilets. Why shouldn't they use your toilets? For ladies. They are ladies. Look at their pronouns. <laughs> what about this person that isn't a lady? Well, his penis. <laughs> Her penis, you f***ing figure. This bit stirred up significant controversy, particularly from LGBTQ plus advocacy groups. Gervais was condemned for what they called anti-trans rants masquerading as jokes. The LGBTQ plus organization, GLAAD, was one of the first to call out Gervais for dehumanizing jokes that target the trans community, accusing him of punching down rather than delivering meaningful satire. Some media outlets point out that these types of jokes fuel harmful stereotypes and contribute to the marginalization of trans people. Gervais, on the other hand, has defended his humor as a way of pushing back against what he sees as censorship and an overly sensitive culture, claiming it's just jokes. His bold jokes didn't only target pronouns, he also went after cancel culture, which has become a powerful force in Hollywood, silencing many celebrities whose opinions don't align with mainstream narratives. But Ricky Gervais? He's not one to shy away from controversy or worry about being canceled. Remember when we tease just how far Ricky Gervais goes when clapping back at his critics? Well, here's where it all comes full circle. When faced with calls for his cancellation, Gervais didn't hold back. He believes cancel culture is just another way people try to silence those who think differently, and he's not afraid to say it. In his own words, just because someone's offended doesn't mean they're right. For Gervais, freedom of speech is more important than catering to fragile egos. Offended, it's that, just because you're offended, it doesn't mean you're right. You know, uh, uh, offense is about feelings, and feelings are personal. Some people are offended by equality. So what? You know, mm. so you can't second guess people. If you try and please everyone, you'll please no one. Mm. With comedy as well, you've got to, I think you've got to deal with taboos and contentious issues. And sometimes you deal in irony, and some people don't get that. But, you know, you can't legislate against stupidity, otherwise you'll be doing nothing. So, <laughs> because I'm, I'm not doing it for the 200 egos in the room. I'm doing it for the 200 million people watching around who, who aren't winning awards, who aren't millionaires. Who, and freedom of speech is so important these yeah. days. And you've got, I, I've reached the age now where I don't care anymore. <laughs> In a time when many comedians are walking on eggshells, Ricky stands by the belief that freedom of speech is more important than catering to cancel culture. Ricky Gervais's comedy is brutal, but there's depth behind it. His humor cuts deep, 
because it forces people to reflect on themselves and society. For Gervais, comedy is meant to challenge, whether it's poking at Hollywood's ego or the modern trend of offense culture. He's not afraid to stir things up, believing that comedy at its best should polarize and provoke thought.